started calling our anchors influencers. Um, I, I think that's a really apt term. Um, you know, you hear fake news and you say, I can't trust the media. Um, I read an article in New York Times a while ago. It was like, there is no such thing as the media because we're so many different things. And when you drill down with people, it's always a station they don't like or a network they don't like. Locals kind of been a little bit sheltered from that, I think, because of those names and faces that they see in the community. But I do think we're shifting into a place of influencers. And, you know, when people see news on Facebook, they don't necessarily see the station. They don't see the network that's putting it out. They just see news on Facebook. And because so many people get their news on Facebook now, I think station brands have kind of taken a big hit. But I think there's a big opportunity there for anchors to kind of build that relationship up because they do look different than a news station did. Welcome to the News Nirvana Podcast. I'm your host, Nick Parker. The News Nirvana Podcast features conversations with media professionals from across the country, highlighting our ever-evolving business models and showcasing the strong and effective journalism produced each and every day. This podcast is made possible to you by the generosity of Town News. Town News delivers solutions, services, and guidance empowering local media organizations to thrive in an ever-changing digital world. Contact Town News today to learn more how they can help you thrive. Connect with them at townnews.com. Rob Curry, welcome to the News Nirvana podcast. Thanks so much. You are the executive producer of digital at KHQ in Spokane, Washington. I'm I'm a newspaper guy, so I'll forgive your TV-ness. Okay, thank you. <laughs> we'll, just get, we'll get the biases out of the way now. Well, I have a face for newspaper, I think, so how about that? We can be well, well that. you know, look, I, I, I can say the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, Rob, let's just start. You know, who are you? What do you do? Okay. Uh, I've been in news, I would say, about 18, 19 years. I, I started, went to Arizona State, Walter Cronkite School of Journalism, um, graduated from there, got a job as a exec, as a assist, associate producer on a morning show in Phoenix uh, and then at KTVK. Uh, worked there for about a year and a half, doing the overnight shift, learning kind of writing, producing, all the basics. Jump ship went to the competitor across the street, KPHO, uh, produced their morning show for several years, and then uh, decided I want to move up into being executive producer. So packed up my family, and we moved to the Northwest at KHQ. I've been here since about 2013. Um, I took a job as executive producer for the morning show, KHQ. Uh, we added a second show called Good Day Spokane for the Fox affiliate here. So kind of oversaw both of those for several years, and then. Um, about two and a half years ago, maybe three years ago, switched into a more of a digital role. I left the overnight shift behind, got a normal, as normal as you can in news shift. <laughs> <you> shift. <laughs> yeah, no normal shift, but I was rising with the sun, <laughs> to say that. Uh, and, uh, you know, really helped the digital first, transition to a digital first newsroom. Um, and that started with KHQ, and then my roles kind of expanded to carry into the other stations that Coles owns. Um, yeah, you are you are a, a a hub actually for what seven seven or eight markets. Yeah, seven markets. So with KHQ being the largest, we have uh, markets in Montana, several markets in Montana, and then we have two markets: KDU, KDO, and the Tri Cities in Yakima, and Washington. Um, so so kind of a nice little grouping of Northwest uh, and Montana Montana stations, and uh, I oversee all the digital content on the websites and podcasts and streaming video and everything that's pretty much not on TV, I, I have a hand in. <laughs> what has, I mean, you started, you started with producing a, a morning show, like you said, and you've moved now into that, that digital side of things. And, and yeah. you've been, I've been, I've been in, in the industry a little bit longer than you, but, but mm -hmm. you know, what have you seen kind of change? Cause that, you know, digital used to be kind of the, the weird new, you know, the younger brother, right? The surprise yeah. baby in the family. And, yeah. and, you know, so what are you seeing kind of as it's, as it's evolved, it's, it's role you know, in, in the business. You know, it's, it's crazy how much more information is coming at us all the time. We we're talking about this other day, talking about with the news director, you know, like when you used to produce a show, you didn't have to worry about social media. You didn't have to worry about websites. You just kind of kept an eye on the scanner and the fax machine. And, and that was it. Um, and if you had that covered, then you'd 
didn't that was your breaking news you know maybe a phone call to the newsroom but now there's so much more information coming in all the time 24 7 and I'm, and along with that people's expectation that we're going to get it out faster and and you know they want answers now and so that's really been the ramp up it used to be like breaking news in a newscast was enough for people but now they want it all day every day whenever it happens um and it just continues to grow you know just more platforms people are publishing on the more we have to watch um and that's good and bad because we're covering more and we're finding out more things but it's also a lot of places you need to have eyeballs does, does that change what we call breaking news i mean you know there, the, even even if it was breaking news there was still reporting done in the background when we had you know your news was five, six, ten. Your, you know, your print deadlines were were yeah. at specific times. So does it change kind of how we define? Do you think? I think absolutely. News? You know, one of the things we've really as we've transitioned to this kind of digital first, I'll call it mindset in the newsroom is the level of the information we have to have is much lower than it used to be. You know, you used to kind of wait. Reporter goes out, gets some information, gets an interview, gets maybe talks to a witness or two that goes on TV and you call that as breaking news, they package it up. Now we're almost to the point where if we have eyes on a scene, we'll jump on a stream or Facebook Live or start tweeting, you know, breaking news, where it can be just one tweet and, and we'll go on the air with it. Um, or a picture, just one picture from the scene, a car crash, we'll go on the air with it and call it breaking news. And it, it kind of becomes this process throughout the day where we're reporting and the very last thing you have now is the reporter with the package who talked to maybe police and a witness and has the video. And that's kind of like the end of the breaking news or before it maybe was the beginning. Yeah. I, I feel like the, the audience expects mm -hmm. a lot different style of reporting. We're almost, almost speed is, is, is more important than the whole story. Yeah. Right. And that's, and that's really a balance we've had to strike where speed and then con making sure we still provide context you know, there's a there's a Facebook group in Spokane that um, basically just posts scanner traffic. And it's really interesting because a lot of people respond to it. They comment, they engage, they share. And a lot of times it's not correct, but they just post it out there. And sometimes they hear some crazy stuff. What we found is that people on the – first, we're like, is this pulling away from our audience? We found is people still come to us. They're friends, you know, with us, or they like our page and their page because we still provide context. So – you know, I think that's really a mission of, of newsrooms is to be fast and to make sure we're reporting it as soon as we can, but also also that important role of journalism providing context. And I, I think that's something that as we move forward, we really have to keep an eye on. You don't go too fast <laughs> and forget the context part. Yeah, I always like to say nobody really fought the internet and technology like the like the news business, right? We yeah. didn't want we didn't want other people playing in our sandbox. We right. didn't want to we didn't want to share our information for free, and and well, you know, look, we we lost. <laughs> <laughs> technology te technology won, but I mean, that is a weird balance, right? Because now ev you know everybody's got a camera and a recorder in their pocket. They've got access to to everything, and 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 look, you feel like you're a photographer. You feel like you're a reporter if you have that thing in your pocket. Mm -hmm. But do you do you still think about how we how we are different, like how we can stand out and do that job? Even at that rate, you know that speed, mm -hmm. still do that job better. Yeah, and I, I think it. I think one, it's you know we have we have resources, um, and so you know I think we, we can we can be out there and we, we have contacts and we can get information. I think it really it really comes down to context, but I also think that as we as we transition, we'll get better at being faster, you know, and figuring things out and um, and and making sure that we're not going too fast. Um, but I really think it all comes back to context. You know, if, if there's a fire, um, the video is great and the information is great. And that's what people can find with their cameras, right? But unless you find out the stories of the people that live there or how the fire was started or, you know, was it a homeless encampment that, you know, is there a problem with homelessness in the city? That's really where I think news is going to win the day because that's the kind of information people want. Great video only gets you so far, I, I think. Um, no, I, I, I would agree. I think I think yeah. it, you know it really all comes down to to that storytelling, mm -hmm. right? 
you know, can, yeah. you, t- can you tell the whole story? And, and I always, you know, I, I actually love the old cliche of news is the first draft of history. I, you know, we're supposed to avoid mm-hmm. them, but, but I actually love that one. I kind of feel a little pride in it, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is the first draft for whatever community or industry you're covering. That's, that's the piece, right? So mm-hmm. if, you, if you've told the whole story, there's still a little pride in that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You know, the characters and bringing it out. And, and I think that's the fun part of the business too. You know, some, some, Photographers and stuff live on the breaking news where they rush out there. But I think most of us are in it to tell stories and to, you know, provide community with information and, and compelling narratives to help maybe affect change or at least inform. So, yeah. What do you think, you know, what are you doing differently with that digital first mindset, right? How are you kind of adapting to meet, you know, what we just said, where the audience is in a different place? They have different expectations. So what are you doing, I guess, differently? How have you kind of changed that, that mindset? Yeah. So one of the things that really the the big paradigm shift for us was getting reporters to break away from that five, six newscast and think about digital first, you know, when they're, when they're, you know, it used to be when I was a producer, we would write web copy last. It was the last thing we did before we headed out the door. Maybe we had to write two or three web stories for the internet. (laughs) Um, And if you're a reporter, it was, you know, you file your web copy after you get done with your live shot, you may put it together, put a few sound bites in from your script, give it to the web guys, they post it. But as we mentioned, you know, people want speed, they want to know what's happening now. And they're checking the website, they're checking their social media multiple times a day, not just at five or six o'clock at night. So we've got to have content there for them, new content, um, updated content throughout the day. And so really what we've worked to do, it's kind of a two-phase process. First was getting reporters to think digital first. And what that really means is they're writing web copy before they head out the door on their story. You know, it might even just be a few sentences, a paragraph. This is what I'm working on today. This is where I am headed. We're going to talk to this person and we'll post it. Middle of the day, maybe they gave us an update after they've done a couple interviews. Maybe there's video to go with it if they shot some video. Um, And then at the end of the day is when we get the full web copy. Um, hopefully before the fives, but, but even after the five is generally okay. Um, that we post their full web copy on, on the web with a clip of their story that they did for the five o'clock news. It's kind of this process throughout the day of updating the web and we're feeding the content, um, throughout the day. The other kind of thing we've done is digital first. Um, you mentioned the hub is combining our resources. You know, we've got, we cover seven markets. They're all really small markets, except for Spokane, I think it's, medium size. Um, I don't know the exact number, but I think we're in the 70s somewhere. Um, and and uh, co- combining our resources has really made us a, a bigger group. You know, there's lots of stuff that individuals we would all double up on, you know, national news or regional right. news. We each write our own version. But now we're, we're doubling up. We're, we're sharing that content across the board and we're organized and we're dividing and conquering a little bit. And the other thing that does is if, there, if a reporter in Montana has a really good story, it now gets shared with the company, which increases the content and rising tide rises all ships. So really digital first means more content throughout the day. And then just those stories evolve throughout the day. Um, rather than well, I think that's a whole other, yeah. that's a whole other side of the, how the business has changed, right? Mm-hmm. Is that, you know, our capacity for human resources isn't what it was. And you, oh, you, yeah. have, to, you have to double up now and you have to share mm-hmm. Because you're right, you know, it used to be we'd, we'd go to a regional event and, or whatever it was, and there'd be seven reporters that might be in the same yeah. chain. <laughs> right. But you're we're all the- serving our, our own master, right? But, right. But, but now you, you just you have to have mm-hmm. one person that covers all of it for everybody. Yeah, and, it's, and technology's made that really, really easy. You know, with the, with the website technology we use with Town News, it's, we can share, I mean, instantly share content across the board. It can be updated. It, gets updated um, flawlessly. So, and then, you know, social media pages, we can all post on social media pages. This is really interesting with COVID, you know, news, the news side really had to rethink how they did things. Digital didn't really miss a beat. Um, We had laptops, they work from home. You know, we still have people working from home. Um, They haven't come back to the newsroom yet. Um, And it, you, you don't even notice because they're just, they're still doing their thing and we're still sharing resources across the board and, you know, web traffic really increased during that time, but uh, we didn't have to rethink like the news side did um, with, you know, web cameras from home and producing from home. It was kind of built in. So, 
Yeah, I thought it was interesting whether from from local, regional, or national news how many how many reporters' studios became their living room, <laughs> right? Yeah, <laughs> or yeah, their basement, and it was just a normal thing. Like if if that had happened at any other time, right? I think people would have really pushed back and freaked out. But it's like mm-hmm. the entire world was doing video calls from their from their homes, right? And almost yeah, we did that excessively, but it was almost like a thing to build a relationship with the viewer. Hey, we're coming to you from our home for into your home. <laughs> right. So it was like, Hey, we're, we're right. We're doing this right along with you. So, well, I, it's interesting you say that it's, it's a way to build relationships. So, so that's kind of, kind of what I, what I was wondering is it, do we still have that? Cause I feel like there's such a huge disconnect now between the news reporter and, and the audience anymore. And some of mm-hmm. that is, you know, the, the, the big narrative about can't trust the news anymore. And, but I mean, is it harder to do that as we've we've gotten smaller in our staffs? Mm-hmm. We, we do more digital where everybody's on a keyboard. Mm-hmm. Is it is it harder to have that that relationship? Is this gonna? Do you think maybe this weird moment in time will help us kind of be more personable again? You know, I do. We we've started calling our anchors influencers. Um, I I think that's a really apt term. Um, you know, you hear fake news and you say, "I can't trust the media." Um, I read an article in the New York Times a while ago. It was like, there is no such thing as the media because we're so many different things. And when you drill down with people, it's always a station they don't like or a network they don't like. Locals kind of been a little bit sheltered from that, I think, because of those names and faces that they see in the community. But I do think we're shifting into a place of influencers. And, you know, when people see news on Facebook, they don't necessarily see the station. They don't see the network that's putting it out. They just see news on Facebook. And because so many people get their news on Facebook now, I think station brands have kind of taken a big hit. But I think there's a big opportunity there for anchors to kind of build that relationship up because they do look different than a news station did. Like if KHQ posts something on Facebook, people see it as the news on Facebook. But if an anchor posts something, it's like, oh, this anchor who I like is posting something. And so I think that is the brand the reporter now. I, I think so, you know, and I think it's going to go back to those relationships on social media. But I was talking to, to a manager about this the other day that I think what old is new again, like we probably should be getting them out like the old days to the state fair and to baseball games <laughs> and, you know, doing those announcing the national anthem type thing. It, because because I think they are going to be the face of the community. I, I think people see the media as the media, but there's a chance to break through um, with anchors. Isn't that isn't that the way that we 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 get that trust back though? Is that mm-hmm. you know I you know, I'm in a I'm in a small suburban community where where I have my news organization and I mean look it's a lot of people we're about a hundred thousand mm-hmm. but but it's just still a small it's still a small town and isn't the way we rebuild the trust is that they know me yeah and then if they know me they might trust the next level up of regional and then I, I just kind of feel like that's we've got like I, I like what you said that's we've got to get back out there yeah. And, and I do think influences is a term because they, you know, that people can, that's the, that's the nice thing is as much as I think a lot of people in media hate social media because of the nastiness and all the comments we have to deal with every day. You look at the anchors pages and a lot of times it's actually really pleasant. They, they kind of have an, it's nice comments. It's conversation almost like you'd have with a friend. And I, I do think that is the, the key to building trust back in these communities, having anchors that are engaged and, and are kind of willing to have a relationship with viewers like that. Well, and I, and I would think, and like I said, I, I, I'm not overly familiar on the TV side of things, mm-hmm. but I would think too, you know, it used to be appointment television, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, they, they saw you every day at five, six, and 10, and now it's, it might not sit down at that time because they're, they're not. taking their kids to sports, they're out to yeah. dinner, they're still at work. Um, it's, it's really whenever they have a break and they pick up their phone, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Breaking news, they're not sitting down at five and six. We're, we're seeing those numbers drop. But but that is the advantage. I, and I see this as an advantage. One thing I really love about digital is I kind of feel like I'm helping fight to save the industry is we can put all that content on their phones. We can put it on their tablets. We can put it on their computer. We even, you know, cars have Alexa now. We, we are on Alexa. We do news updates in Alexa. So you can literally get a newscast from your car if you want. I think it's really important that we keep evolving to those platforms and just having content, especially local content, there when they expect it. When they hit play or they open the app, that there's new content that's relative relevant to them, 
that's, that's there. Um, I think if we can do that, it's just repackaging the five and six and breaking into smaller pieces throughout the day and, and getting on those getting on those platforms. So is the is the idea to use this digital first stuff to drive people back to the you know the appointment five, six, and ten, or does it all just have to kind of complement each other? I think in the beginning we probably would say that, and I think that's still maybe a win. But I think that's probably a secondary goal now. I just don't think people are coming back. I, I don't. I don't think. They, I think it would take something really big for people to come back for a five and six. I really think it's all about complementing each. You know, all these platforms, letting people know it's there, and then getting them to these platforms to let them know it's there. You know, we'll put the five and six on on the app, and they can watch it whenever they want. And we've, you know. Our morning show, the highest rated time is 8 a.m. Our morning show ends at 7. <laughs> but the replay is our highest rated hour at 8. So people still want the content. They just want it when they want it, you know. And we're not and we're not playing our replay over the air. We're playing it on our digital properties. So, you know, if they're going, one, they found it on our digital properties. And, two, they're watching it when they want. So still a newscast. It's just not the newscast at, at that time. So, and I think that's a win for us that we've been, you know, we were there and, We've got it where they want it, and they can watch it when they want it, and everybody's happy. The News Nirvana podcast is brought to you by Town News, the creators of IQ Audience Plus. IQ Audience Plus replaces your old school, one size fits all paywall with a smarter metering solution that targets visitors with custom offers, converting drive bys into paying subscribers. Learn more at townnews.com slash audience. Do you feel like the, uh, you know, that's, you said that's where they're at, right? They're, mm -hmm. they're, they're wanting it, whatever they have, their breaks. Do you, as far as building the content, is are we, are we, you know, what was it? The, the thing for about 10 years was we got to make everything shorter, shorter, shorter. Nobody has the attention span. But mm -hmm. I feel like there's been some good pushback on that. I mean, look at the the long form journalism sites that are really taking off. Yeah. Are, are, are you still trying to find that balance, do you think? Yes, absolutely. Um, I, I think... We're probably in the shorter, shorter, shorter mode right now. You know, like how do we do weather in 30 seconds? How do we do weather in 15 seconds? Um, I, I talked about, you know, when there's breaking news with a tweet, hey, let's get a live video up on this tweet, car crash. Someone just sent us a video of a car crash on the side of the road. Go do a video so we can stream it. I think that's where we're at now. I think that we've got a, the long form. Um, I, I think sometimes reporters think longer is just better, and it's not always longer is better. So we've got to find that content that people, that long form content that people want. You know, not all stories deserve to be long. Um, so what's the long form content that, that people are looking for? And, and one place newsrooms are getting into is podcasts. You know, that's that's kind of where some of this long form storytelling is is getting into. We're doing a podcast right now about um, you know missing Native American women, and it's had a lot of success. Um, and then we have a couple of true crime podcasts that do really well uh, that our group has done. And it's really been a nice outlet for the kind of the itch of long form storytelling. Podcasts have been kind of a nice place for that. Um, so I think that might be one outlet. Um, I, I think in terms of like news, just breaking news and news stuff, I think shorter will eventually win out, but I could be wrong. <laughs> So who knows? We, 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 we've been wrong before. Yeah, we've been wrong once or twice, right? <laughs> you know, I, I think you're right. I think the – I mean, we're obviously doing a podcast here, mm -hmm. but I, I think you're right. That's kind of at the – right now, That's I think that's one of the great ways that we can we can meet people mm -hmm. where they are. I mean, whether they're commuting, whether they're you know doing stuff around their house or their yard, people are, people are really getting into the stories and the things that are happening – happening with podcasts. And if you can find those, those really good stories to dig into, it's, mm -hmm. it's the perfect platform. Like you said, whether it's a kind of a true crime investigative piece or, or even just, uh, you know, I found it's a great way just to string together a few features. Yeah. Right? Like, like here are some really cool people in whatever community mm -hmm. and you can take an hour and really kind of dig into who that person is and, and introduce the community to them or organization or whatever. I, 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 it's a, it's a great platform. Yeah. I think, and it really is meeting everybody where they are because they can get it in their car. They can get it in their phone. They can stream it on their speakers at the house, whatever, wherever they want to be. 
Yeah, and it's low cost too. You know, I mean, you think about how much TV costs. Podcasts are cheap, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I mean, just yeah, it, it's it's not a it's not a big cost to your organization at, mm-hmm. at all. Once you start once you start putting it together, and especially, you know, you have all the technology already sitting in your building. You don't have to really buy anything new mm-hmm. except for space, right? Yeah, and, and you know, the next thing we're looking at, and we have that we're going to start dabbling in this probably later this year is like video podcasts, like we're doing right now. Right. But, but, you know, with like things like is it the Alexa show, you know, where Amazon's mm-hmm. not putting video with it, you know, you'll have the option to have the audio podcast or the video podcast. And so now you're seeing pictures of the people they're talking about or, you know, seeing the faces of the victims they're interviewing or you know, evidence in a crime or things like that. We we do a ha- Halloween podcast. I thought that would be really fun. You know, <laughs> like you show the haunted places and you know around Spokane we've done that the last couple seasons and it's it's for the last couple of Halloweens it's it's been nice but I, I think the idea of a video podcast is interesting too so kind of all these again it comes back to like how do you go to all these different platforms where people are and get that content out there in a way they want to consume it it's really nice. yeah I, I I'm always surprised at the amount of people that do watch the video podcast I experience I experiment with with some of the ones that I produce or or host and and I, it always shocks me when people um people are like yeah i watched it what yeah. really i mean you know <laughs> yeah, we, we turn on the we turn on the cameras just because you know whatever let's help the yeah. let's help the search results right um mm-hmm. but you know there's i there is one i do in the craft beer world uh, and i am shocked that we post it for the fun of it on vimeo and on youtube and, yeah. and i'm always surprised at, at the social media feedback or something yeah. or you run into somebody and like <laughs> yeah i watched that one Really? Why do you want to watch? Why do you want to watch us? Our faces? No. Yeah, and face for a newspaper here. So right. <laughs> what are some? I, I guess are there are there some exciting things that that you feel like opportunities that that all of this this focus and and as the technology changes, you know, like you just talked about podcasts and things mm-hmm. coming up. Are are, are there some some kind of opportunities you think that get you excited about what you guys can do in your community? You know, yeah, you know the big thing we're working on right now is is streaming. Uh, we call it nonstop news, but it's it's basically streaming video throughout the day, video mini stories throughout the day. Um, mini, I mean short. Uh, and so, the idea that we can take a newscast, the technology is now where you can make one person can essentially make a newscast from a desktop computer. You know, you can have video, they can have sound, they can have live shots, all that stuff. Um, so we're, we're really pushing into that, trying to do a lot more of that throughout the day. Um, so you kind of, instead of having one giant newscast, you kind of have like 30 mini newscasts where you have an anchor on a desk and, hey, this is happening right now. We want to take you there live. Boom. Here's the information. We'll check in in 15 minutes. Um, I think that's going to, I'm hoping that's going to be a game changer because I think it'll really just give people what they want. And, and if I, we get people in the habit of going to their phones or whatever when something happens and we're there, and we've got an you know, anchor in front of a desk and we've got information and we've got video. I think that'll be a big win in terms of, you know, bringing back people to local news, finding those viewers that have left the five and six. Um, and I also think like we talked about earlier with the anchors rebuilding trust in the community. I think that's just a great thing. You know, I, I've always loved the community side of this business. Um, Coles is really invested in their community. So we do a lot of community projects. Um, and I, I always like that. And I think that, I think that's where you see the positive side of news. And I, I look forward to rebuilding those trust relationships that we can with the community. I, I think that's just great when everybody loves the, the news anchor and the station and yeah. Yeah. How do, that's always a weird, a weird balance, right? I mean, you think about the reporters and anchors that, you know, mm-hmm. that are active on social media as well as out, you know, out in person at public things. Mm-hmm. But I think, you know, you use the term influencers, right? And mm-hmm. that, I mean, immediately, equates in your brain to social media. Mm-hmm. I, are we just all in now on <laughs> telling everybody, you know, get on your, your Twitter, your Instagram, your Facebook, and just, just be out there. And it's really, they got to do it from their personal accounts, right? Like yeah. when we first started, we were all, okay, we're going to have KHQ presence mm-hmm. and you get on there to do it. But, but people didn't really follow that. Nope. Again, with KHQ, they're seeing Facebook. They don't, they don't see KHQ. They see Facebook when it's news. Um, you know, sometimes my wife, my wife gets her news from Facebook. And I'll be like, where did you see it? And she can't remember. You know, <laughs> she'll see an article. 
and she can't remember. And I'm like, oh, okay, it's because it's just Facebook. But the anchors have that, you know, connection with people. You know, they can comment and comment back and like their comment and and really build a relationship. You know, I think with social media, we still have to be careful. We don't want to give away all of our content. We, you know, and that was the kind of the addiction with Facebook Live is what a great tool to reach people. And you see the numbers spinning up and, you know, reporters can talk to viewers live and everything else, but we didn't get anything for it. You know, it wasn't driving back to our websites. It wasn't um, helping our SEO with our other stories or anything like that. So there's still a place for it, I think, but we have to be very careful about how we give that content away. But I think one really useful spot for social media is that opportunity to connect with viewers. Um, yeah. So I, I want to come back to that, that part about it. It didn't okay. really drive, drive back. But first I want to go, you know, I think, I think the hardest part, and maybe this just might be, you know, ugly old newspaper guys, <laughs> but like, you know, we didn't really want to be the brand. Right in the spotlight, we were happy sitting in the corner of the courtroom, writing, mm-hmm. you know, writing the the murder story, or you know, I, we, and I, I like I said, that might be just be my own bias, but you yeah. know, the, I think the TV people liked being it more. But mm-hmm. do you feel like it's harder to convince people, uh, and by people I mean us, the reporters mm-hmm. and the anchors, to to hey, we need you to be your brand? No, <laughs> I think I, well, I think in a TV newsroom, you've got two kinds of people. There's the on air and then there's the behind the scenes people. The behind the scenes people is like pulling teeth to be the brand. I think they're much closer to like newspaper people. You know, I was joke. People are like, why don't we ever see you on TV? I'm like, if you see me, it's because everyone's dead and it's a zombie apocalypse. And <laughs> I'm the last guy you're going to see anchoring a newscast. But because I, I, you're right, I'm with you. I, I want to be the corner of the courtroom. I want to be behind my keyboard putting a show together. But I think there's a lot of people who love being in front of a camera and they love social media and they, they love their big personalities and they love connecting with people and they love they love all that. And, I, and it's a real benefit for the station when you have someone that connects with the community because they can drive your, your brand and they can make those connections. So, Have you found some social media channels to be better than others? Uh, you mean in, in stations? Yeah, I mean, you know, like like... You know, I always say news and sports is great for Twitter, mm-hmm. right? Facebook is great for community. Feed. I mean, like I said, my local news outlet, you know, 80% of traffic or higher is driven by Facebook traffic for females over 35. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, you know, what we found, this is interesting, is Facebook dominated. Facebook was our big driver. Uh, I'll say Spokane is probably three years behind trends, seems like. So, Facebook was our big driver for a long time. And like 75% of traffic was coming from Facebook. Um, when COVID hit though, that switched and people were coming directly to us for information. That's interesting. Um, yeah, it, it, it was. It, and it was like, they didn't want to rely on the Facebook algorithm. They're coming right to KHQ or finding us through Google. So we saw direct and Google really start to rise. And so then we kind of focused on our SEO a little bit more and our headline writing and things to kind of boost that. Um, and, and that trend really hasn't reversed. You know, we're still, I was looking at the numbers before I jumped on here today and we're, you know, over half of our traffic doesn't come from Facebook. I think it was like between 15 and 25% is coming from Facebook. And I don't know if that's because people are leaving Facebook or we're not doing a good job on Facebook, but our, our Facebook numbers are down, but our, our traffic hasn't really been hurt. Um, and I will say that part of that is we've made a conscious strategy not to do as many Facebook lives or post raw content to Facebook. We've tried to post links and, and you know, always have a purpose in driving people back to our platforms. But again, Google is, is kind of stepped up in, I, I think more people are Googling either us or Googling the content as, a, as opposed to trying to find news on Facebook, so. Yeah, I always, I always struggle with myself. I, I mm-hmm. debate whether or not, you know, do you put just a link back to your website? Or do you put the video? Do you post the video straight to the social media channel? You know, w- what's the best way to build my own brand? Yeah, and to get traffic to my own site. I mean, and this is where we're going to come back to it, right? I mean, mm-hmm. we're in business. Yeah. We want to monetize. Mm-hmm. And if you're putting all of that stuff on social media, it's great because you can get to your audience, but you're not really getting anything out of it other than spreading the story. Right, or pennies on the dollar if you are making money. You know? Right, it's, it's, right. It's, we found some ways to do some sponsorships or sponsored posts and stuff, but 
But really, but that's not the same. The that's not no. the same kind of monetization. No, no, no. It's pennies on the dollar. I'm not an ad guy. You talk to our ad guy. In another podcast would be really fascinating. <laughs> but, but I know that you know we we really our Facebook. I tell all our digital people is there will be a time when you post that video. You know, the we love the bison attacking people in Yellowstone. Seems like we get those every summer. Being Montana, um, and and there will be times we'll post the video straight. Because it'll just, it's such a shot in the arm for our Facebook. It'll blow up our Facebook. It'll be everywhere. It'll be in everybody's feed. And and the win there, I think, is, okay, maybe they will notice the brand this time. You know, if we post it, we've got the video. We put our logo on the video. You know, maybe we can break through and people see the brand. And it's it's a chance to be kind of like a video billboard for our, our brand. And then we'll still post a link to the article and maybe people will click through. But most of the content, we're posting... Um, we're posting just links back to our site with the hope that people find us. And I think the struggle now is, you know, we used to have this strategy to try and win Facebook of just posting content constantly, like every 30 minutes, an hour to try and, you know, have the most engagement throughout the day. What we're finding though is like we post articles that people, there's stuff that people just don't care about. And, you know, nobody's really missing that. And so we've tried to be really thoughtful with what we post, post the biggest stuff, or craft the post in a way that's interesting to people. So we're posting less, but I think we're more thoughtful with what we post. And for the most part, it has a link that drives back to at least one of our platforms, either a stream or our webpage or, or something. Do, so. you, do you feel like the idea there as you're being more thoughtful about it is to, um, and, and, and I ask this as I'm genuinely curious because these are things I deal with too, but um, where you're trying to get appeal to the bigger audience with those or or is it important that we we even still post those things to some of the smaller audiences the niche stories um that might not you know it might be a, a much smaller percentage of people that care but mm -hmm. they care i i think that yeah i think the word maybe you're looking for is local i think that we we really work on posting local content because everybody's got the story about biden and whatever right and, right 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 and we're going to be kind of white noise um out there, but I think if we can craft a really good local story, and that's where it goes back, our digital first helps is now we've instead of one Facebook post with a reporter story, we've got two or three that we can post throughout the day, um, or post you know a link to the full interview with someone. So I think as we've posted that, that local really has powerful, powerful connection with our viewers on our Facebook page, and you will see that take off. Especially like the, we have a segment called Help Me Haley, where it's basically like uh, get results segment you know she goes out help you know she helped someone get concert ticket refunds the other day when the arena didn't want to do it um or i shouldn't say didn't want to do it they're having trouble getting refunds um and things like that so that stuff is you know even though it affects really one person it has huge people will share it and love it and comment on it and um so that kind of stuff i think is is always important for us to post and then repost you know we'll if it does really well in the morning, I'll tell the evening guys, hey, make sure you repost this and get a second boost. And it's kind of out there twice and um, it'll do well twice. So I think we've kind of shifted that way of posting less and I should say more thoughtful with our content and then reposting the good stuff. It's kind of made up the difference from just posting everything that comes across our desk. Do you think maybe we're, we are getting more thoughtful with, uh, with, with all of our content? I think I feel like, you know, at first when we switched from like we started out, right, when this conversation, we were talking about switching from the the three or four deadlines a day to now <laughs> every second is a deadline. Mm -hmm. We were posting everything. Yeah. Ha mm -hmm. Have you found a way to still be thoughtful about it, though? I think it's and, a struggle. And I think it goes back to that word you, the word you yeah. used earlier, context. Mm -hmm. yeah. that's, that's the important part. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's a struggle, I, especially in a young newsroom in a small market, getting kids right out of college. I, I think it's the goal. I don't know if we achieve it every day, um, but I think we we try, and it, it's important to celebrate wins when we do it, you know, to point out and say, hey, we did a really good job with this today. Um, you know, with, with Facebook, it's important to be extra thoughtful. With some of our, like, nonstop news stream, it's like everything. It's almost like the reverse of Facebook. It's like, hey, get everything out there. Do it in 15 seconds. You're going to find somebody that's going to want to watch it. So... It's on our platform, so if they watch it, it's a win. <laughs> so it's it's kind of this mixed message, but I but I think that it goes. I think that's the biggest challenge for newsrooms is 
how do you speak to each platform? You know, the, the five o'clock and six o'clock viewers who sit down for a newscast are expecting a certain type of product. People on Twitter are expecting a certain type of product. People on Facebook are expecting a certain type of post. Uh, people who watch video on YouTube are expecting something. So how do you speak to all of those different platforms now going crazy? Um, right. And, and making sure your voice is effective. And even, you know, even push alerts on your phone. We had a, we had a meeting about that. Like, how do you have a voice with your push alerts? Because now you're not competing with the station across the street. You're competing with Apple News and People and NBC News and, you know, your dentist who's sending you push alerts and everything else. You've got to break through on your phone. So how do you have a unique voice there? And so I think that's really the, the challenge is how do you speak to each of those platforms? And then again, with context, how do you provide enough context on each of those platforms so that people are getting what they want? Are you, are you guys using, uh, you're taking advantage, I guess really not taking advantage. Are you utilizing, you know, the, the Apple news channels and those things to where, you know, the aggregators, is there, is there power in that for, for local organizations? You know, I, I don't, I, this is above my decision making, but we've talked about it. It kind of goes back to the same Facebook problem is you're handing your content over to Apple. Um, you might get visibility, but you're getting pennies on the dollar. So it's it's better kind of think our strategy has been to kind of build our own brand and, and see what comes and, and, you know, have faith in ourselves that we can <clears throat> we can find the community there that will connect with us and, and turn to us to be the trusted news source in the community. Um, you know, what we have seen, though, is like the Newsbreak app. So some of the other aggregators that just kind of share our content, I don't want to say without our permission, but just kind of find it and repost it. That has been a big driver. I, I'm surprised the Newsbreak app specifically is a, is a surprising, drives a surprising amount of content to our website, um, which is nice because we don't have to give up anything. They just grab it, post it, and it comes back to our website. So that has been helpful, but I don't know that we did anything to make that happen. <laughs> it just did. What are, what are those so, that works? Yeah. You'll take the, you'll take the win. You can we'll get take it. it. Okay. Well, one of the reasons we, uh, we're, we're doing this, this podcast and this show is really, I think also to, you know, most of our audience is probably going to be people like you and I that are just in the business and want to, want to learn more, want to, want to see what everybody else is doing and, and talk about the stuff that we face. So yeah. I, I want to, I always want to push back again a, a little bit and say, you know, this is a great industry. I love it. We tell stories, right? Yep. It's great. So, so here's, here's the easy stuff as we wrap things up. Uh, you know, what excites you about coming to work and, and, yeah. and doing the news? I, I think it, it, I'm with you. It's a great business. I love that every day is a new day. You know, we'll have a bad day and you come back and you, it's a brand new blank slate. Who knows what's going to happen? Um, and I have a manager who says everybody else is, let me make sure I get this right. Our, our best day is usually, let's see, everybody else's worst. I don't remember the quote, but basically we have so much fun in news. A lot of other people don't, you know, if you're stuck behind a desk, we do a lot of cool things. I, one thing I've always loved about this business is knowing things first. You know, I love knowing stuff first. I've always been into the news and watching the news, but that thrill of having that piece of information that, you know, is really going to either excite people or upset them or just, be a big talker in the community. I it's still a thrill. And I also love breaking news. I think everybody in this business probably loves breaking news, but that thought that when big stuff is happening and you've got crews and the newsrooms humming and um, you're running around and you're trying to get everything on all those platforms that there's nothing like that. It's, it's a great rush. And I, I think it's one of the greatest team sports ever. I, when I got into news, I really started liking sports a lot more um, because I think there's a lot of parallels between a sports team and a newsroom. Um, you know, you, you, baseball, you hit a homer and you win the game one day, you come back next, you strike out three times. You, go to, <laughs> you know, you, it's the same with news. You have really good shows, you have really bad shows, but it's it's all about the team you're on and, and things like that. And, and I love that part of it. So I like I like the sports analogy. I think I, yeah. I think you're right there. There is there is no better rush. And I think that's why, you know, to me, producer, editor, whatever, when you know, when you've got kind of that team everybody mm -hmm. going out and you know, you know, it's a story that matters. Yeah. Um, I, I've always had, had a lot of guilt when I tell people that, you know, one of my proudest days in the business was, was actually nine 11, mm -hmm. right. But knowing what the group that I was with, the stories they told and the way they covered what was happening in our little part of the world mm -hmm. and, you know, absolutely horrendous day. Right. But, but 
I don't know that I've ever been more proud. Yeah, it's the same with us with wildfires. That's how I feel. You know, you have this terrible, terrible event happening where people are losing their homes, but we're there. We're the ones they're turning to to get the information and, you know, stories being told and should I evacuate? Should I stay? That's a, it's a big responsibility, but it's also, you feel really proud when you can deliver on it and, and, you know, tell those stories that really have an emotional connection and, and bring the community closer. So, Storytelling yeah. and context. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you can call this episode. There so, we go. <laughs> there we go. So. Well, Rob, Hey, I appreciate you uh, yeah. taking a little bit of time hopping on the interwebs here with me and, and having this conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm excited to, to get this, get this show going and just, just talk to people around the country that are, are in our industry and telling stories and figuring out how to, how to keep it going and keep yeah. doing as, as everything changes, whether it's the technology, the money behind what we do and, you know, and all of that. So, so I'm excited to get this going. I appreciate you taking some time. Yeah. Happy to do it anytime. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Rob. That will wrap us up this week. We'll talk to everybody next time. The News Nirvana Podcast is available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or most any of your favorite podcast apps. The News Nirvana Podcast is made possible by the generosity of Town News. Connect with Town News at townnews.com. The News Nirvana Podcast is produced by Fredcasts. Think. Speak. Act.